years ago, I heard this story, and I, I love this story. It's about this guy named Zane. Uh, Zane was, uh, he's a snor, uh, snorboarder. He was a snowboarder um, from Colorado, and he was one of those surfer type guys. You know, if you watch the, the puppet plays, you'll know Ty. Ty is a surfer dude from Southern California, and he's a cha, bra. And so this is Zane to a T. Zane always, I mean, he's like, dude. He, he says weird things like shred the nar. Yeah, shred the nar. Like all this stuff. Anyways, really nice guy. And, but he had a really troubling past. I mean, he did a lot of drugs. He was a, a drug dealer. Um, got, he, he tells a story about how he, the, when he came to Christ, that um, he came because the, the kid that he was selling drugs to, his parents invited him to church. And so he had all this. But when he accepted Christ, he started going full into the ministry. And he started working with kids, kids as young as barely walking all the way up to high school. And one day, one of these kids that he was working with took Zane's skateboard, flipped it upside down so the wheels were sitting up, and the kid was sitting on it, spinning the wheels. Just spinning the wheels and just laughing, having a great time, just spinning all the wheels. And so Zane looks at him, and he's laughing. You know, and he, goes, he comes up to him and goes, hey, can, would you like to learn what that's really for. And the guy's like, yeah, sure. And so he flips the skateboard up, puts the boy on it, and starts moving him around. And he teaches him how to skateboard. And the kid loves it. And the point of the story when he told it was this idea that, you know, that kid was using it and he was having a great time, but he was missing the point of what it was for. And I thought, man, that's a, that's a great story. I love that. Because a lot of the times in our lives, we have these situations where we experience something, right? But there's something more to it. There's more to the story. And so today, when we're getting into the book of Mark, that's where we're coming to. We're coming to there's more. And so if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in Mark chapter 7. And we're going to be starting in verse 31. Now, today's going to be a little different, okay? So... We're going we're gonna to review and come back, review and come back, review and come back. And there's a reason why, and I hope you'll see it eventually, why we're doing all this stuff. So we're going to be in Mark chapter 6, or Mark chapter 7, starting in verse 30. And as we do, I want us to get this, okay? We have to get these three points real quick. This is a, a quick rundown, a quick review, okay? Three points. We have covered, since we started back in the book of Mark at the beginning of this summer, we have covered three groups, okay, three groups. One is Herod, okay, and Herod, um, he didn't understand, okay, we just need to get that. He didn't understand. Then the second group is the disciples, okay. The disciples were the ones that they, <laughs> they're, they're messing with the stuff up there. Stop it. Okay, the disciples focused on on this, um, on this future thing. So, so Herod, let's, let's go back to Herod. So Herod had this thing where he, he heard about Jesus, but he just didn't, he, was, he just misunderstood. The disciples then, they were going to go to a place of rest, and, and they were so focused on getting to that future place that they missed the actual rest. They missed the, a mini rest, and then they missed the miracle. Then they miss some other, then they miss the big rest, you know, and then all these things they miss, okay? So they miss this future thing because they were so busy, um, because they were focused on something else, all right? So then we have the last group, which was the Pharisees, which we covered a few weeks ago. The Pharisees missed the commander because they were so focused on the commands. They missed God because what they were doing with the commands is they were so focused on trying to make the commands work. And do so much, they added so much to them that they actually were missing God because they were missing the, the actual commands. They, they were convoluting the commands, and so therefore, they were missing them. And so we just need to know that, okay? So you got Herod, remember this, Herod, disciples, Pharisees. That's all you need to know. If you just missed everything else, that's fine, okay? Herod, disciples, Pharisees. Here we go. So we're going into chapter 7 of Mark, verse 31. And as we're diving into this, we're going to cover 33 verses this morning, okay? Now, that seems like a lot, because it is. But we're not going to read every single part, 
Okay, we're not going to read every single part, and the reason is, is because I know I have a wonderful voice. I just don't want to put you to sleep as I read the whole thing. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to divide it up into four sections. There's four stories that are going on here, and so we're going to divide them into those four stories, and we're going to read a passage from each of those, and then we're going to go back and we're going to connect everything that we're talking about. All right. So this is how we're going to roll with this, right? Here we go. This is going to be fun. I'm going to read it off this. We so just let you know, Carol and Jeff are gone, and so and my other leaders that are here that know how to work that are gone. So I just grabbed one of our brand new servant leaders and I said, "Guess what? I'm going to give you a crash course in this." And so she's up there right now. So try to make as easy as possible on here. Here we go. So Mark, we're actually going to start in verse 32. Okay, we're going to, again, we're going to chop these up smaller, all right? So verse 32, chapter 7, Mark, here we go. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said, Ephatha which means be, bo- be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened. His tongue was loose, and he began to speak plainly. Okay? So just what we need to know from this story at this point is this. The man who couldn't, there was a man who couldn't speak or, or um, hear. Okay? So we got, that's it. That's just very simple, right? Okay? There's a lot here, but we're, that's all we're unpacking right now. All right? Good? All right, let's move on. During those days, Another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me the three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way because, this, because some of them come a long distance. Okay? So what we need to know from this is here's another feeding. All right? This is, so the first, we've already covered the first um, miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. This is the one where the disciples missed, right? They missed the miracle. God, Jesus actually challenged them to, to do the miracle, and they missed it, okay? So this is another one. It's very similar to that one, okay? The only differences are how many people, how much food was um, produced at the end, and then what happens at the end. What happens at the end of the first one is Jesus sends the disciples off in embarrassment, they're embarrassed, and, and he just sends them off. This time, some Pharisees come to Jesus, and they ask him for a miracle. Okay? So we're not going to focus on that. Instead, we're going to focus what happens afterwards. Okay? Okay? And we actually need to go further down. So we're going to drop down to a verse that's not going to be up there. I'm very sorry. Here we go. Verse 15. Be careful, Jesus warned them. Watch out for the yeast and the Pharisees that, and uh, watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. They discussed this with one another and said, "It is because we have no bread." Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, "Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you not still do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened?" Do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember? And so the Pharisees come and they ask Jesus for the miracle. And after that, Jesus says, don't be, don't allow the yeast of the Pharisees to get to you and um, to get to you. And don't like, don't be like Herod. So don't be like Herod. Don't be like the Pharisees. And they, of course, they miss this. They think, oh, they, they pick up on yeast. They go, oh, he's mad at us because we have no bread. Okay? So we have that. And finally, we come down to this last one. Verse 23. Here we go. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. 
Okay? So this last one is just about a man who couldn't see. Right? So these are very, if we go through these, these are basic stories. Okay? Basic stories of the Gospels. You'll probably, if you read through the Gospels, you'll probably read this a couple different times. Okay? And each of these, pretty standard. Jesus heals someone. Jesus feeds someone. Jesus corrects his disciples. Very standard stuff. And so when I was going through this this week um, and, the, and last week, I started asking the question, what, what does this all mean? It's so standard, so simple. It's very straightforward, but what does it all mean? And there's little hints throughout the whole thing that start building on each other. The biggest thing is this. If we go back, if we go back to verse 15, okay, verse 15, be careful, Jesus warned them, watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. Okay, we have been talking for the last few weeks, and since really there's this little stopping point within Mark, and that stopping point is when Jesus sends out the disciples. It's kind of a breather spot, and then we get the thing of Herod the passage about Herod. Now, Herod was all about missing the point of Jesus because he was so focused on murdering John the Baptist. And so he missed that. And then we see the disciples, they miss something. And then we see the Pharisees miss something. And then we come to this point in chapter 8 where Jesus directly references all three of them. Or it's directly referenced to all three of them. You have the disciples who are being warned, right? So they're in there. You have Jesus saying, don't be like Herod and the Pharisees. So all the things that we've been talking about, all these, these stories that have been leading us this way, gets to this point. It's almost like a little climax here. And Jesus says, look, you guys have been missing things. Don't be like the other groups who are missing things. So all this is building up, right? Let's look at what Herod and them miss. So Herod is almost like that person. And again, before all this, Jesus had taught about four different types of soils, right? He talks about the different soils, about different types of people. One that um, when the message is given, it's kind of picked off right away. One that it kind of grows, but it lets the, um, the hard times come or it doesn't grow very deep. Um, then the thorns and thistles allows things to take it the, to urge it. And then you have the good soil. As we're going through this, we see Herod. He's so invested in himself, so focused on his own sin of killing John the Baptist, that he misses who Jesus is. Completely misses it. Then we get to the Pharisees, okay? And the Pharisees... They are so invested into the commands of God that they miss God. So right now you have someone that's so invested in sin that they can't see God. And someone so invested in trying to be good enough for God that they miss God. And then you have the disciples who have done some really amazing things so far. They have seen miracles they have done healings. They have preached the gospel. Yet they have missed what Jesus is really about. They have missed the compassion of Jesus. They have missed the, the reliance on God. And so you have these three groups. And then you have Jesus directly tell them, Look, you do not be like Herod and the Pharisees, missing things. Don't be like them. And I, so I, I started thinking, okay, look, what, 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 what's going on here? And so I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this, and then I realized something. If we continue reading, this is what Jesus says. Why are you talking about bread? Remember, they're the ones that go, oh, we, he said yeast, therefore he's talking about bread. And he says, why are you talking about bread? Do you still not understand? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fell to see, and ears but fell to hear, and don't you remember? One of the things that we have to understand about Scripture is that I don't think that Mark wrote this willy-nilly. Because I believe that the Holy Spirit is the one that's actually leading him to write all of this. 
And so I don't think God's going, you know what, just write whatever. It's good. All of it builds. And we've been talking about this. Last summer we talked about how this whole scripture, that when we're coming to the book of Mark, we're looking at it as a whole. How does one flow to the next? Let me ask you a question. In this section that we read today, was there anything dealing with seeing and hearing? The first, when we get, when we come out into this first section, we have someone that needs a healing, right? They're, they don't speak very well, they need, Jesus touches their tongue. They don't see, or they don't hear, so Jesus touches their ears. At the, after this, we have someone that needs a healing as well. He needs seeing, right? One of the things that I find interesting about Scripture is the way it's set up, but also what is put in there. In the first healing, there was two parts to it, right? There was the tongue and the ears. In, that la- in the other healing, there was two parts of it as well. Jesus touches one. Can you see? Um, I see people walking around his trees. He touches again. There's two. And so I started thinking, well, why? Why is it? And then, why, so why is there two at both ends? In the middle, Jesus is saying, don't be like the Pharisees. Don't be like the Herod. Herod. Again, we have, right? And then he says, can you not see? Do you have eyes but cannot see? You have ears but cannot hear. And so I started thinking about this. What does that mean? And I started thinking about Herod, the Pharisees, and the disciples. Each one of them understands something about God, right? Je- uh, Herod thinks Jesus is, a, is John resurrected. So he believes he's a prophet. But he's so focused that he doesn't actually know anything about Jesus. You have the disciples who, yeah, they did a bunch of stuff, but like we talked about last week, they hit a wall. And then you have the Pharisees who know the commands of God, but they are missing God. And so I started thinking about this, this idea of twos. Every single one of these groups has one thing, a basic understanding of God. But that's it. And they're stopped there at this basic understanding. Kind of like those guys got a preliminary, a, a small healing. They got an aspect of healing. Now, the first guy, he come, he's brought to Jesus, and they want two things done, right? Let me ask you a question. If you had two legs, and they both were hurting, right? You have, say your knees are bad. And you go to the doctor, and the doctor says, man, both of your knees are bad, and, you know, if you don't get something done for them, you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to walk, or you're going to walk with a limp. And you go, okay, fix them both. And he goes, no, 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 I'm, I can only fix one. Would you go, oh, that's great, but that's not what I need, right? I need both of them fixed. So this guy comes, and he needs his mouth taken care of. He needs his ears taken care of. If he got one done, hey, that's great, right? But he needs both. And so Jesus takes care of both. The guy, the second guy comes in and he needs healing for his eyes. And so he gets a partial healing. Would that be good? I mean, let me ask you guys another question. If, if you were completely blind, put yourself in this mindset. If you were completely blind and you got to see a little bit, you got to see with the, you know, just images, you, not, not clear, but you can do it. If you have glasses, you can just do this. I know what that feels like. Okay? And you go, but if you were completely blind, and you just get this, so you see the fuzziness, at least now you see the fuzziness, right? And from, if you've never actually seen anything, you might go, this is really good. This is fantastic. I, I actually get to see something, Right? 
But let me ask you a question for those of you that can see or have glasses that make it everything sharp. Is there better than just the fuzziness? There's more to it, right? But we know that. Why? Because we've seen clearly. We know that there's more, but if you've only had the first, if you've never had sight and you're just now getting a fuzziness, everything seems better, right? Now think back with all these three. They each have something, and it's better than they had before. Now they have at least a, an under, a simple understanding of God. But all three of them have stopped. They haven't got the fullness. And I see this with the two healings. For the guy that couldn't speak, hey, that's great. Now he can speak, but he can't hear. He still needs his hearing done, right? He still needs a second part of that healing. For the guy who couldn't see, he saw blurriness, but that wasn't the full extent of the, of the healing. He still needed to see sharply. And so you have these two things at the, at the both sides of this dealing with these three groups that are stuck in the first thing. Kind of like that boy sitting on the, skateboard, on the skateboard just spinning the wheels. Yeah, he's having a good time. He's enjoying it. But is it the full experience? No. And that's what we see with these three groups. They have something, but they don't have what God desires them for, that to have. And I see this with us a lot of the times. We, too, we tend to do the same thing with God. We get a little bit of something from God. And we go, wow, this is great. I really enjoy this. But then we kind of just, that's it. We leave it there. Why? Well, because we've never experienced the fullness. And so what we're experiencing just seems so full. Like someone that's blind that only gets the fuzzies. But it's something we've never experienced, and so it's fantastic. But usually what, what tends to happen is we just leave it there. And we're like, well, this is fantastic. This is great. It's like it is. It really is. But there's more. And I see this with Jesus telling his disciples, warning him to not, to not be like the Pharisees and the Herod who have, are stuck. Because they're two different stuckness. Herod's stuck in his sin. These guys are stuck in trying to be good enough for God. And Jesus is saying, don't be like these people who are stuck in this place. Move forward. Because they're not. The disciples are not moving forward. They're stuck too. They're stuck in themselves. Even though they have Jesus right there, they're still stuck in themselves. And they're not moving forward in their relationship with God. They're okay with that first encounter, and they're just leaving it there. But God desires so much more for us. He wants us to get into a richer and more satisfying relationship with him. Not one that is just blurry, but one that is sharp, that sees it, understands it. That, that as I don't know about you, but I've, I've had these times in my life where I'm like, man, I, I don't feel God the way I felt him before. No, there was that time I really felt the presence of God or I got to experience him, but now I don't. Why? Well, because I've tried to make that the experience. I tried to make that experience my relationship with God. And the reality is there's more to it. And it's just kind of like, it, it's like when you first start driving, everything's new, right? Those taillights in front of you, coming really fast towards you are new, right? Making those turns are new. But after a few years, you get used to it. You take your hands off the steering wheel, now you're driving with your knees, right? It becomes old hat. Or you, or you dance um, Father Abraham. You know, you just, so you, you do these things because it's old hat now. And if we're looking at God and we go, God, it's, it's old, that's not because God has lost something. It's because we've lost something. We're stuck. We need to go, you know, if we're on the, the driving of our, of our lives, our relationship with God, maybe we need to get onto a racetrack. There's a new experience. You know, let's drive a different vehicle. Do something. Stop. Let's stop being stuck 
in our, rela- our relationship with God because God desires this. One of the things I think is funny is um, we talk about, um, I've ta- had conversations with people about what's eternity like? You know, won't that get boring? It's like, well, let me ask you another question. Can you, if God is eternal, is there something to learn about him every day? Even in eternity? So why can't we grow more in our relationship with God now? Why can't we experience new things now? Isn't there more to the relationship than what we've had? This is where God wants to take us, into a deeper relationship. We've had the first touch. We need to get to more for our own sakes. Because God's saying, look, there's more. There's clarity. Come closer. So let's never think that, oh, God, I'm just stuck. There's nothing more. I had a teenager one time tell me, I don't go to the youth group anymore because I've learned everything I need to know. It's like, that's good. I haven't. And it's like, okay, we need to move forward. And so here's my challenge for you this week in this. It's a, it's a very simple thing. Mark, goes, that's it? Oh, yes. We didn't cover all of the, these passages today. And I, I don't want to make you think that we, you don't have to. We need to. There's a lot to these passages. There's a part of this I wanted to talk to you today about, and I couldn't because God said no. But there's the, the look at Psi, okay? Look at the size. There's two of them. Again, there's two. Okay, look at the size in the passage. But this is my challenge for you this week, to take these passages, take these 33 verses, and read them every single day as a whole. Okay, don't separate them. Read them just straight through. And have this prayer as you're reading them, okay? God, I want to... I, so pray like, pray like this. I want your desire. Okay, I want... I want a desire to be moved into the fullness of God. I want more. Is that, is, is that okay to ask God for more? I think so. I think it's okay to ask a, an eternal God that has everything for more. Because we're his children. And when the kid asks for seconds, you know the, the mill's good. Let's be that kid that asks for seconds. God, I want more. I want more. Give me more, please. I want to go deeper. I want fullness. I want to see clearly. I don't want to haze. I want more. If we're people like that, who are completely pushing into God, what a, what a change in our lives and the lives of our church and the lives of our community if all of us desired that more. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the, the opportunity to, to come to worship you, to honor you. Um, but Father, I also thank you for your people. I thank you for their desire to know you, to hear from your word, to grow closer to you. Father, I, I thank you for your desire to bring us deeper and closer to you. So, Father, I pray for this week for everyone in here, that they would, they would want more from you, that they would desire more from you, that they would reach out to you, that they would dig themselves into your word, that you would reveal new and amazing things to them, and that they would take that second step, that other encounter, that, that next healing in their life. And that you would come, fill them with your spirit so that they would know that you care deeply for them and that you want to move them deeper into relationship and that they would experience something new. So, Father, I ask that in your son's name. Amen.